All right, more troubles tonight for Arizona Democrat Katie Hobbs and her struggling gubernatorial campaign as Project Veritas has now uncovered even more bizarre behavior inside of the campaign, including not wanting to debate Curry Lake and evidence that Hobbs is trying to hide her radical anti-Second Amendment agenda from Arizona voters. As always, we let you decide. Take a look. He's like, oh, what do you do? And I was like, uh, I work for a team, and I don't know why. And like, it's like, like, now I'm having this conversation. And, like, like, she's like, oh, very late. So I was like, fuck no. Oh. I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk politics with anyone who I don't know. We have a lot of concerns about Katie's family. Why? Lots of stuff. She's not debating very late, which is. Oh my god. We don't know. So it's up. Katie supports something like an assault weapons ban? If she could, yeah. I mean, that, the problem is that's a federal issue, right? This conversation happened following Wolf driving our journalist around with an AR-15 in the car. Is that an AR-15? That is an AR-15. Yeah, he had it broken down in the backpack when we started. He just pulled it out. It can fit in a backpack? Yeah, this, this folds down. It's a crowd control weapon. Easier to fire than a handgun. I was thinking it's scary there. R.C. Maxwell with Project Veritas action. Now, we did reach out to Katie Hobbs and her campaign for comment. They've yet to respond. So why won't these Democrats debate? Why won't they agree to debates earlier before voting begins? Uh, they're all adopting a Joe Biden hiding their basement bunker mentality, and the media is letting them once again get away with it. Here with reaction. Trafalgar chief pollster Robert Cahaley, along with insider advantage pollster Matt Towery. I'm going to ask you both a general question. Georgia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, uh, not the gubernatorial race in Arizona, more Blake Masters, who has a libertarian to compete with. New Hampshire, General uh, Bullduck. Um, as you look at those important Senate races, where do you see them going, Matt Towery? Well, as you know, I poll for a lot of the Fox affiliates in those, in those states, so I, I, I call it as I see it. Um, the Republicans started rising in almost all of these states about two and a half to three weeks ago. And I, I don't know if it's going to continue. You never know. But for the moment, what we are seeing in general, and I have a new poll in Arizona coming out tomorrow, so I can't tip my hand on that. But in general, what we're seeing are the Republican candidates in all of these states hanging in there, even against incredible attacks, like Herschel Walker has taken in Georgia, for example. Herschel Walker, I think, Robert Cayley has his own poll right now showing Herschel's within three or four points. So this is becoming I, I a very interesting thing. Yeah, yeah, even less than that. Let me just say one other thing. These gubernatorial candidates in states like Florida with DeSantis, Georgia with Kemp, they're running even stronger. And it tells me that something's going on. There is a new wave developing. Whether it will hold, you don't know, but it's certainly beginning to develop. A lot of attention has been paid to Georgia and Herschel Walker, but we're laying out a case against Raphael Warnock that the people of Georgia have not really heard Robert Cahaley when they find out that he used his car as a weapon and his wife alleges that uh, he tried to run her over, ran over her foot, uh, and that he didn't pay uh, child support and that he was arrested for covering up a scandal involving child abuse at a camp he ran and, in fact, that they found some child abuse. Uh, do you think Raphael Warnock's in trouble? Well, I definitely think he is. I mean, what, what you're seeing now is all these, this onslaught of attack against Herschel, and it, it was a lot. Uh, it, it went on for two solid weeks, and, and now with Matt's tower, Towers poll out at three points down, and uh, ours at, at two, and also Emerson at two, I mean, it's like this is this entire storm and all this spending has come and, and, and moved right at Herschel, and it, it is not, you know, the, there's, there's no huge fall. I mean, two, two points is virtually nothing in this race, and it's moved that way back and forth. And, and, and the Walker campaign hasn't really spent any time attacking. I mean, they've been focused on the issues, and everybody around Warnock has been attacking Herschel. So I think a little, little fair game is, is due, and certainly it will, it, with those negatives starting to, to kind of stack right. up, and with his running mate being Joe Biden, I think it's going to be tough. Less than a minute. Predictions. House and Senate, at the end of the day, where do Republicans land after this election, Matt Towery? 
Well, the House, the Republicans take. That's pretty obvious just from redistricting, but with the wave you have developing. In Senate. the Senate, I think it's going to boil down to one thing. It's going to boil down to Herschel Walker and Warnock being in a runoff in December in Georgia. Wow. So you're saying 51-49. Okay. Robert. Maybe, yeah. I think if, they, if the trend continues as it is now, and it, it certainly needs to change, look to the Republicans to have the House by 25 seats or more and get the Senate by one or two seats. One or two. So you're pick, picking 51 or 52, 51-49, uh, 52-48. All right. Thank you both.